Hi, my name's John. Welcome to another Sunday night nightcap. In tonight's nightcap, I actually do one or two jobs for myself. I modify the pipe work on my marine steam engine, uh, bend some real heavy wool copper pipe, do a little bit of silver swirling, make one or two brackets just to make things look a lot more presentable because I'm now starting to take this engine to steam rallies and uh, running it off my friend's Roby steamroller. In part two of tonight's nightcap, I show a little bit more of the restoration work I'm doing on the Hawker steam engine. I've changed the valve that controls the steam flow into the engine. That's a proper steam valve. This little thing here is what they call a displacement lubricator that puts steam oil into the engine cylinder. There's a flexible hose goes onto here, which goes away to my friend's steam boiler. And the problem I keep getting is it keeps moving that and that keeps coming loose. So really it wants stabilizing fastened to the engine somehow. So I've got some heavy wall copper tube here. So I was thinking of putting that into there and then putting a the bend in the bottom because I'll be able to make a bracket onto here to support it and it's also something I can polish up as well so we need a bend putting in the end of here it is heavy wall tube it should bend quite nicely as opposed to the thin stuff that you use on your, your central heating systems it's 5 years down a tube I'll bother the pipe bender so I'm going to have a go with that and see if I can get a nice smooth bend in the bottom of there this is the bender I borrowed that's a 5 8 mandrel that goes onto there, that goes into there, and this is the handle that does the bending. So I want a straight bit and then a bend. I'm not quite sure which way or how this works. It should bend without kinking because it is really heavy wall pipe. And I want, I want a nice 90 degree bend in there. And that looks like a nice 90 degree bend to me. Or perhaps it's slightly less than 90. I'll put a square on it before I take it out the former just to make sure. I think it wants to go a little bit more, but not much. You've got a, a grip in there. And that's quite a respectable bend. It's got a little bit of a flat on it, but it's not it's not bad at all that. And that is to all intents and purposes, 90 degrees. Quite pleased with that. I'm very pleased with it. This pipe's thick enough to be able to put a, a thread on the outside of it. A faith BSP is a, the size I want to fit into the, the screw into the union on the valve. So hopefully we can cut a, a faith BSP thread on here. Which will see us having to Brace or so like this into a, into a fitting. Screw copper is the way plumbing used to be done. Copper strain stuff to machine. I've been told you can lubricate them with milk or paraffin or turps. Milk's not very good because it'll end up your hair, end up stinking the sour milk, which is not really a good idea. Make sure it's got a decent thread on the end. 
that is very fusion. I like the look of that. I'm going to make a little bracket just to tie it in at the bottom there. And there'll be a, a union screw on there. I think I may change this because that's just a plumber's fitting. That's the exhaust pipe I was using. And put a piece of this on to a nice sole at the end joint. And that'll come down there with a, a clip hole them together. And there's a bit of flexi goes on there for the exhaust. It's a lot more rigid, proper job, and it'll also polish up quite nicely. So I think that's going to be the next stage. We'll make a new little flange for there. We'll put a piece of bronze or a piece of brass. And then we can sew our solar that into there. I could even make a union and screw it in. But I think sew that in. It'll be quite sufficient. I might even be able to use the original one that's on there and just drill it out. I'm not quite sure how much room I'm going to have. In fact, I think that's... I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with it yet. But I prefer this stuff to the, the plumber's copper pipe, the house copper pipe, which is really thin wall stuff. There's just no comparison. I'm going to make a new flange for the exhaust port on that steam engine. Um, I'm not even going to draw it, I'm just going to work it out using the milling machine. The two out are stud holes, and the two stud holes are 29 mil apart. So we're going 29 mil. Split the difference on that. Using the DRO makes it really simple. Not more accurate, it's just easier to, easier to do, really. Right, so that's the centre of those two holes. This is the hole where the, the tube's going to go. This drill should be dead on size. I'm going to use the Z axis to feed it because it'll have a tendency to snatch. Screw it down a bit as well. That's uh, going to be a good fit in there, that'll be like uh, the sort of fit I want. What I can do, I can expand the, the tube once I get it in there. That's kind of the wheels lined up absolutely spot on, which is just what we need. I'm going to make a slange, the, the slange, I want to make the flange slightly wider, you can see this one's offset a bit, that was actually a little casting, I remember making it um, that side's alright but that side's a little bit piss wobbly so what we're going to do, put two pins through, mark that side, mark that side cut it off and then we can basically grind it or sand it to, to size I may well sold it onto the copper tube first before I machine it to size the tubes are reasonably fit in the hole but I want to expand the end of that a little bit just some of the tape around this will do and that should stretch the outside of the tube which it has done so now we can tap that into there and that will hold it nicely in place that will be filed flat once it's been sold that will be going to sew that this into here that's 
so that's going to fit on there quite nicely it wants a little bit more bending but not a lot the thing there which you make sure it's straight that gap there is even which it certainly appears to be there's a little bit of wiggle room on the bolt holes put that now it's nice and tight on there so it can go away and silver solar on and then grind it to shape and file it flat and that looks much much better than the the bastardized unions that were on there even if they were my bastardized unions and that will just tweak you in just a little bit I'll warm this up and soften it and then it'll be a clamp holding those two together and then everything is going to be good I think once they're held together actually it, it can't move it all in and I wouldn't need to put a, a bracket on there we'll see what happens once we get it so let up okay, so we've got a nicely silver solder joint I've got a 12 inch sanding disc like a joiner sanding disc makes light work of sort of machine and stuff like that I'm going to remark where I want the flange cut that with a hacksaw and then I'll grind that to shape and then finally polish it and I'm very pleased with that it'll clean up very nicely indeed I've put a, maybe a touch too much solar on but it's got a lovely fillet and it's actually come through on the inside Right, so now we've got a, a line to work to, we'll trim it off and then I'll go and carefully sand down to that line. Right, the flange just cleaned up quite nicely and that's going to go on there and it's going to look a lot better than what was on and that one's bending in very slightly. We'll put a little bit of seal around there, fasten that on and then bend it to shape and then make a bracket for the bottom. brass nut and a washer all the studs and everything, everything's metric on this engine I made it in the metric era I suppose I really can't understand how people can work with little 8 and 10 beer nuts and bolts honestly I mean Bob does them all the time he's got bigger hands than me I've got a little bit of wiggle room on there to get them lined up nicely Right, that wants to go this way very slightly and it wants to go in the copper's really soft up there so it's just bending the plaster seen that's where I want them there nicely lined up now the clamp on the bottom of there will hold them all in place and it's a much neater better setup altogether We need to make a like a W shaped clamp to go around that those pipes. We we'll use brass because brass can looks nice.
It's a great lack of measuring going on here. You probably noticed in a great deal of trial and error. Well, it works. Definitely tell you the bench up time now, I think. Port. I drop the bastard thing once more. Okay, so it simply goes around the pipes like that. There's one on the back as well, and just a little brass nut and bolt through there. It'll hold them one together. So I need these corners trimming off. Actually fits better that way. Need these trimming off and then that one making exactly the same as that. I'm not a great one for using hacksaws and files when you can use grinders and I think a lot of these little brackets look better when they're made slightly, uh, not rough, but not machine perfect because they never were originally they were handmade. It's a blunt drill, that. An extremely blunt drill. Brass tends to grab, and you want to be careful when you drill it. You can actually sharpen the drill a certain way to allow you to, to drill brass. So I drill again. Bloody hell. Every day I must pick that up. Nice little doomed head brass drill just to finish it off. Very happy with that. A little bit more work to do forming these corners, but that's going to hold them pipes secure now. Very happy. I think you'll agree they definitely look better than a the modern plumbing fitting and it stopped all the movement now and nice and secure there's a piece of flex goes on there to take the exhaust away I'll have to make a little union for the end of the day for the steam pipe to go on to if there's something else to clean or something for depth to clean anyway and I could have milled two clamps out out of the solid, two halves out of the solid brass but that looks, it just looks right I think anyway, a little bit of work with some sandpaper just to knock the edges off and it'll look like it's been there forever.